something very, very important. The money philosophy, how a shift in mindset can make your pocket swell. One of the big problems that many people have is their relationship with money. And many people have a bad relationship with money. They can't let money sit. They can't let money stack. They can't let money accumulate. It's a very intriguing thing. It's a very interesting thing that so many people have a problem with money. They have a problem getting money. They have a problem making money. They have a problem getting in a relationship with money. And this is one of the big, big issues that so many people have. As I think about how my relationship with money evolved, I stopped seeing money as some unattainable far, far away, or something that was kind of special. Money is not special. Everybody that's listening to me right now has some money. The issue is having enough money to do what you want to do. And part of this happens because so many people have not been taught the money philosophy, which we're going to get into in a minute. Because right now, we need to have a little chit-chat. We need to go here. Speaking of money, at Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills, we have a lot of courses and programs to help people. Like, today is Tuesday. Money is the consulting Tuesday. I've been on the phone all morning. There isn't anything scheduled until 5 o'clock, so I want to do this. And there, there's a few courses that you should get. If you want to talk to me, you can do the business consult. If you want to learn how to manage money, money management is the basics of finance and wealth development. I have that on six pay, six payments of 50 ducks. Because you need to get this course because this course goes into the principles that you need to get into to shape your money philosophy. And then we got the Hustlers LLC, H undergrad, which you can get in for 200 bucks per month payment plan, and you get the whole course. So we got a lot of good stuff there, and everything is below the video. And you got a lot more courses. Dart a holding company, which is on the payment plan. So, we've got plenty of stuff to help you get more money, to create more money. Get a little bit more money. That cash into something that makes money. Because for every year that your money is just in a savings account doing nothing, you're literally losing money. So, you don't want to have money just sitting around forever and ever. But you want to get into holding money. And this is going to supersede all of your um, creature comforts. This is going to supersede all of your habits. Because once again, also, so this is the first thing. Learn the habit of holding on to money. The second thing is, you're going to have some physical cash on you. You're going to have physical cash in your wallet. And you're going to have physical cash in the bank. Preferably across two or three accounts. So you're learning to hold on to money. You have physical cash on you. 
you have physical cash in the bank. Since we include credit cards as part of the money philosophy, you're going to have credit cards with nothing on them. You may just swipe them once a month to buy some coffee or some, go home and pay it off. So you're going to have lines of credit open, money in the bank, money on you to develop this money philosophy. Because once you develop this money philosophy, your pockets are going to swell. Money attracts money. And this is why when you're broke, broke, and broke, broke is you don't have any money. You, you need to borrow 20 bucks from Ed to get you to payday. You have no money to attract any money. Nothing. Nothing. It's a metaphysical thing, I know. But whenever I have money, it attracts more money. And one of the things that you got to understand is the psychology of money. Because some people see money as power. Some people see money as um, more than what it is. Money is just a tool. So the money that you can have, the money that you put together, the money that you develop can be very powerful because years ago I used to work with this girl who was a CN certified, certified nurse assistant, CNA. I made more money than she did. This chick, because her father introduced her to sound money principles at a very early age, was going out and paying cash for cars. She lived on her own. She lived in the house where she put a significant down payment on her house because one of the things that happened with her is her father got her used to saving 75% of her income. So let's just chop that up. So she was taught to save 75% of her income regardless of what was going on. She's just put it away, you know, she's been doing that. And because she saved so much of her income, and for many years when, you know, at one point she was saving almost 100% of her income before she moved out the house, she had a very nice savings account that was easy to replenish because she had money on her, physical money. She had money in the bank and a few accounts, money on credit cards. And this is how money attracts more money. It is crazy how many people don't know this. Let's see what we got. Good morning, people. The DSLR Chronicles. You can't save your way to wealth. Nope, you don't, unless you're making like two, three million a year. Okay, because you're already wealthy and you're just managing your money better. I got a 50 spot that's been in my wallet since May of this year. I've been putting 5% into a 4K for years of work, Sunday. I bought it to zero. Okay. All right, so y'all working on that. And once you understand the powers of money management, not saving, but money management, because savings is taking money, putting it in a savings account and watching it stack. Money management is holding on to money for specific reasons and keeping cash flow going on in your life. If you have a job, that could be part of your cash flow. That can be a big part of your cash flow because cash flow is essential to any business, to anybody that wants to make money. So typically most people's source of cash flow is their paycheck every other week, every two weeks, or every you get paid. And that right there is another thing that once you learn the principles of the money philosophy, you will never have to wait on payday to go out and do something. And this earning app, 
you could pull out a hundred bucks. People don't have any discipline because when I see these commercials for the earning app, good looking out earning app, that these people have not learned the principles of money management where they can put a hundred or two dollars away. Because see, unless your life is totally jacked up, there are more good days than bad days. And during the good days is when you stack money away. You put money away during the good days, right? But there are some people who, who cannot save. They spend every penny they get. They don't have any net worth. They have nothing. And it's very, very intriguing that when you look at it, these people have very bad money habits. Because, you know, going back to, you know, once again, cash, physical cash on you, cash in the bank account, cash on the credit card. You want to have money in those three places that, you know, that attracts money. Because once again, I'm telling you, money attracts money. And if you don't have any money stacked up, there's nothing to attract money. And there's nothing for it to come in. Eric and Nicole, Glenn to speak of facts when I moved to Vegas and I have to go through banks. Cash got me into this house within seven days. I, let, let, let me tell you a little story about what happened to me years ago. I was a storage auction guy and I was just, I was into it about three, four years and I needed to move. And I, I didn't want to lie. So I just presented the guy because I was trying to rent this place and then eventually ended up buying it. And I just presented the guy with bank statements of just on the application. I attached 12 copies of bank statements that had reflected hundreds of thousands of dollars going through these accounts. And he called me up within 30 minutes and said, you're approved. That was it. I don't even think they checked my credit. So having cash on you, having, um, you know, because th th this is one of the things, you know, I, I've done streams on this about how people are drunk in the American credit system. Because every time, like right now, every time I talk about saving up money, buying a house, everyone tells me, Glendon, don't do that. Take your large down payment, split it up and go out and get mortgages. They can't even see doing it another way. Because, you know, once again, my goal isn't to have just one house. My goal is to get a house, get a renter. And I don't want to do multifamily right now. Uh, my goal is set. I'm looking because, you know, 20 houses, $2,200,000 houses is... $2.2 million worth of net worth. And, you know, uh, the, the prices I'm getting, I'll be able to get it almost $2,000 a month. So 2,000 times 20 is $40,000 a month. Half a million dollars a year in passive income with built-in deductions to offset my earned income. Now the owner that holds the note is my private money lender for fix and flips as well as my mentor. He said he could tell. Thanks, G. Hustler knows a hustler when they see it. Because, you know, the thing that I'm understanding about private money lenders is they're looking for people who can get the job done, who can complete the project on budget. So good look. Rod Smith with money comes money. Yeah, because... One of the big problems is, and I made a video talking about how to start a business with no money. The video got a lot of traction, but I want to do a video how to start a business with 5,000, how to start a business with 10,000, how to start a business with 20,000. Because once you get into the money philosophy, you leave 
Brokeville. I think Damon John wrote the book, The Power of Broke. Once you understand certain things about the money philosophy, you will never be broke again. I want you to think about that. Now, I used to be very, very bad with money. I was the guy that was, you know, the, remember the Columbia House CD Club? I would get the CDs and, you know, pay them a little money. I, then I would pawn my CDs. I, I've done the pawn shop. I've done the title pawn. I just had atrocious money habits. And when I was in this state, I did not have money, physical cash on me, money in the bank and money on the credit card. I have none of that. I was just like on E, driving on fumes, literally. William Johnson, nothing like having five or six value cash value in the whole life policy. Eric and Nicole, he came back and walked through the house he sold me and felt cheated. I hooked it up so good. Hey, you know, there, there's a special skill set with flipping property. And one of the things that I've seen since I've been looking at real estate, there's a lot of people who get into these houses and they don't know what they're doing. And then they try to exit for what they put into it and what they, um, you know, so to make a profit. And I mean, the Atlanta real estate market is insane right now. You know, you got shells of houses going for 130, 140K that need massive work, need $65,000, $70,000 worth of work. Also, here's something else about the money philosophy. Once you deploy the money philosophy, once you understand it, once you're operating on the cash, you have the money to do things right. Because a lot of these flips, are not done correctly. And after someone buys the house and moves into it, they're going to have a whole bunch of stuff to fix because the people who got in, got in by the, 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 the chinny chin chin, the skin of their chinny chin chin, and they didn't have enough money for rehab costs, and they start cutting corners. Having the money philosophy will allow you to do things correctly to set your business up. So this is a very important thing about having money. Like, you know, y'all heard my story about me having a heart attack and how I lost nothing because I had a very strong cash flow, plus I had good money management habits. In that garage right there are two, and there's a BMW, there's an Audi. You know, when my BMW was new, off the lot, it was over 100K. I paid cash for it. My Audi was 50K. I paid cash for it. And once again, there, there's so many people who are just, they're like they're allergic to cash. And they're addicted to OPM. They can't <laughs> fathom doing something of their own own power. Because like I said, I, I, I keep getting these people, go out and get multifamily, more profit. And one of the things that I look at is, I look at the multifamily units around here in Atlanta you know where most of them are in the hood I don't really want to be associated with hood real estate the duplexes because uh, there's a certain section of town where there's a bunch of duplexes it's in the hood you know if I was like I wanted to do section 8 or something like that which I really don't then all of this stuff leads me away from where I want to be Eric and Cole, yeah, I've been looking at Atlanta. They are bugging. Have my realtor writing off our, on houses that have been sitting. Cash and these fools are saying no. I mean, it is crazy around here. Woo, Seattle has shell homes for 300 to 500 plus. That smells like money. And another thing about the money philosophy when you got the personal money management systems into play, then you sharpen up your business uh, you know, skills. 
Because once again, you know, with my real estate thing, I am not in a hurry. And this gives me great patience and guidance because, you know, I could sit on my cash to next year. Not a problem because we have a recession that's coming and that's going to soften up some of these prices. So I can do that and I can be fine. And once the thing is with the money management philosophy as applied to business, you become wise. But like, you know, going back to the Atlanta real estate, all my offers were going to be 10 to 25 percent less than what they were asking. Because I was looking because everybody's swinging for the fences. And this is, you know, because once again, having resale experience, I know how to price stuff to make it sell. And typically, the prices that make it sell fast are not the same prices that you want because people are going from maximum impact. You know, like, I mean, people try to make 100K off a flip because what I do is I'll go back and I will check what they bought it for. And I say they bought it for 85000 Now they got this bad boy for sale for two twenty. So they're trying to make 100K off a flip. And... The marketplace is not going to sustain that type of activity forever. Pricing is a very elastic thing. And I think we're, we're getting to that point. Many new flippers like to grab that low hanging fruit. Many new flippers don't know what they want to do. This is why I'm easing into the real estate game because just because you get this house for 25 K it could take 100K to make it inhabitable again. And this is one of the things, because this is why I'm going for houses that don't need any work, that are already in good condition, so I'm going to have to raise my budget a little more to get those type of houses. Chaz Johnson says, what do you think about buying tax lien certificates? Typically, what I have seen is, once again, we keep going to the hood. Most real estate profits are coming out of the hood. It is distressed property. Because what's a tax lien sale? This is a house someone has that they don't really care about. They Maybe they inherited it and they didn't keep up with the taxes. And typically, because, you know, I was thinking about trying to do some wholesaling around here because I don't see bandit signs around here. I don't. And I, I'm just wondering... Will that work in this neighborhood? Erica, and they really aren't flipping the houses, barely any work done on them. So you, you see a lot of stuff here that, you know, you go into these houses, you see gaps on the door jams because the, they, I mean, it, it's just interesting. Most folks getting an already rehab house are new buyers or buyers who do not want to do the work. I'm that person because one of the things that I'm looking at is speed. How soon, you know, because essentially once I identify a house, once we go on the contract, I'm going to start marketing a house for renters. And, you know, hopefully I can have a renter in there the day I close. Just lost a townhouse by Atlanta, Georgia. Property came in below sale value. Seller refused to reduce the price. I'm telling you, this market here is in need of an adjustment. Eric Williams, code enforcement in the better areas don't let bandit signs stay up. I don't see them out here. Jason Clutch, you don't need that stress. You want a reliable renter in the average price home, if you ask me. And also, money. Because one of the things I've been seeing and listening f f with this whole real estate, wholesale real estate works very well under $250,000. And most of it works very well under one, you know, one fifty, dollars which ain't this market. 
because we got trash, and I mean trash, going for 150. These are houses with no work done. If they take some work, the house is going to be 220, 250. For, uh, for real estate. Oh, the market's going to have to adjust. It's just insane. Mika Travis, to get an offer in the land area, you have to offer above the selling price. I haven't put any offers yet, but uh, I wouldn't, uh, from what I've seen, th that seems to be crazy. Atlanta's going to go up another two years because of the level of new construction companies moving there. This is why I'm going to get something in the 240 to 250 range because, you know, I see plenty of those. And these are, you know, houses in great condition. They've never even been rehabbed. The name is to wholesalers walk, walk, work around neighborhoods with cameras up. Had a guy walk through my neighborhood once and sure if he was bird dogging and chasing my neighborhood. I stay out of the cool. I, I don't really know how these wholesalers work because I haven't gotten to the point of making myself known and introduced to people. But this is the recession that's going to shake stuff up. And, you know, it's, I heard Dave Ramsey go off on a rant talking about the recession. And he said some stuff that is really true. If you manage your money well, you'll be okay during a recession. If you have a job and you know how to work, you'll be good during a recession. If you are managing your money, you don't have any debt, you'll be good during a recession. And I mean, you know, he was spot on with many of these things because these have been my positions because I got a whole bunch of cash and I have no debt. And I want to convert that cash to income producing assets, <clears throat> excuse me, but I'm not trying to go crazy. And we will see what happens with Atlanta because I was talking to another real estate investor and she's like, the prices of houses are increasing every year is insane around here. And that was her situation. William Johnson, I'm thinking next run will be rent to own. Tenant more likely to take good care of the property. Oh, uh, that's one exit strategy. Like I've heard about that. And let's say it doesn't. When you put up a similar house for sale, 20K less than average price going. As long as you make a profit, profit, your houses will go well before the others. Well, you know, everyone here is swinging for the fences. They're going for max profit. They're going for, you know, the, it, it, it's, a, it's a little bit of delusion because there's some houses that have been sitting on Zillow 100, 130 days. They ain't moving. Now, if a property is in the right neighborhood and at the right price, those move. Any thoughts on buying empty lots of land? Chas Johnson, if you're going to buy land, you need to know what's coming f with the city. You need to know of any potential property development because raw land, that's a hard one. I mean, it could cost you five, six, seven, ten K just to hook up with the sewer lines. So once again, you know, if you're going to buy raw land, you need to be an experienced raw land buyer. That's where you need to be. Because I think everyone, and this, this is another thing with money. When people, everyone is trying to find this thing that hasn't been exploited. Because I, I had people upset with me because of when I got in the storage auction business and the television was come on and they was like, man, all the good deals gone. Not really. It's just not as easy as it used to be because most folks didn't know these things were happening. But people get so butthurt 
once the, the gravy train days are gone. I mean, I was in the storage auction business during the gravy train days. You go out with $21 and come back with 15 units during the holidays. Rod for real estate. They have a lingering effect thinking they can get top dollar when the market isn't getting top dollar any longer. And that's one of the things I'm looking at because I, I wake up every morning and I go through my houses. I, I save houses because I'm tracking them to see how fast they sell. So if these people are over leveraging, trying to do huge come ups, could Atlanta experience a housing bubble? Absolutely. Because you, you got so many people here who are trying to flip houses for maximum dollars and they're not real business people. And a lot of people go out and buy these houses and get stuck because they don't know how to get contractors. They don't know how to do certain things. And the, the cost of rehab is way more than they thought it would be. So this is how you have someone having a house and they all have to hold on to it for a year. And they, they're doing one flip a year versus flipping three to four times a year. So this is one of the things that's happening here. Right now, and this is about money and running your business. You know, if I got to the point, because we're, because once again, the, the rehab stuff just depends. Because, you know, I can get a rehab because this is interesting. They're getting these rehab properties for fifty to eighty-five thousand dollars, and I don't know how much they're putting into it because I don't know how to estimate this stuff. But I would estimate they're not putting any more than forty k into these houses. So you get a house for eighty-five, you put forty k, that puts you at one twenty, and you try to sell it for two forty. You're trying to hit a serious home run where you get six figures. After the real estate fees, this is what people are trying to do. And I can tell you from a selling standpoint, it, it depends upon the market. You know, if the market is going to support this, because for, so far from my research, the market isn't supporting this because I'm seeing all these houses sit on the market 60 days, 80 days, 100 plus days. And they've got all this, and I've seen price drops. So that's another indicator of incorrect pricing. So once again, with the money philosophy, once you look like money, walk like money, you will draw more money to you. And this is because you got to go ahead and get yourself situated. You got to go ahead and... Make sure that your personal finances, and this is another thing. A lot of people are trying to get business credit with jacked up personal credit. Those days are gone. It used to be you could start a LLC, go out and get your Staples car, some Grangers and stuff. And you could go out and get a no PG credit card within six months. They're not doing that because there's not that many. There's still a few, but there's not that many no PG credit cards. And we have people out here who haven't adopted the money philosophy, which is to get their personal credit straight. Because depending on how bad it is, you can get your credit straight within six months to a year. That is time well invested because that opens up the door to all types of business products, lines of credit. And this is something that you need to do because many folks are trying to cheat the system and the system ain't having that. Marcus Coaston, I'm licensed. I've studied MLS daily. There's a lot more price decreases than usual. I've been seeing that because these people are swinging for the fences. They're trying to make maximum dollars because let's say I was a rehabber and I was a flipper. I would be looking at cash flow. How fast can I get cash flow? Because sometimes the difference between 
getting 80% of what you could have got versus 100% could be months. So if you get the 80% of what you wanted quickly, take that money, turn it again and, and, and keep moving. Cause someone who's flipping and has reasonable prices, they're going to make more money because they're going to sell faster. They sell faster. They get their money back to get into another profit, a property. And it's this vicious cycle of speed and a cash flow. And you got a lot of people out here just sitting on properties. Uh, the name is, so if I can afford a nicer car, should I buy for appearance to attract more money? Cars do not attract money. Money attracts money. You can be in a beater and have money coming to you. Chaz Johnson, people are watching too much HGTV house flipping shows. Once again, you know, house flipping is so attractive because you flip a house at the end of that deal, you got 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80, 100 K people are crazy. Make attack. Glendon do hurt them with the business credit. People are not ready to hear that. They need to hear it because when they go to apply for these business credit cards and they like, we want to look at your personal credit. They're going to be like, Oh, what? Why you want to look at my personal credit? We want to see if you're a bum. Because typically, if you have messed up personal credit, you're probably going to mess up your business credit. And this is one of the things that happens when it was so easy to get people would go to credit boards. It doesn't exist anymore. It's something else. And there, there was a guy that had these stickies, how to get your LLC, which cards to apply for, all of this stuff. And we had people out there balling out of control, going out getting these no PG visas, MasterCards, running them up and not paying the bill. It's also the time of the year that these homes are listed. Moving into winter may be the time to buy. That's one of the things I'm looking at, Rod, for real estate, because like I said, I can sit on my cash. You know, I'm, no, I'm in no hurry and this makes me a better investor because I'm not desperate for something. Alyssa Franks, yeah, you can't be in the beater and attract money. And this is one of the things that a lot of people don't seem to understand. Looking like money, looking like fake money, you got the nice suit, you got a nice car, you got a little jewelry, you got the look, you got the swag. That only fools hood people. Real rich people don't roll like that. And this is one of the things because Oh, Phil has got to, if you get your personal credit straight, you can start, you could go out and get an LLC and start using your job income to apply for business credit today if your personal credit is straight. And this is something a lot of people don't understand. This is why personal credit is so important because every day I get offers from somebody, 0% interest, this, 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 this. And you wanna be in that position where you, you're like, uh, cause I'm not signing up for this stuff because I like to maintain a high cash flow lifestyle because cash attracts cash. And you know, I have the business to lean upon. But one of the things that is happening as I move into this other world of real estate is I've got to learn the rules of real estate. And I've got to learn the deals of real estate and I've got to learn the money philosophy of real estate because every time I talk about buying a house, I have all of these people who say, do not spend all that money on one house. What you want to do is get five doors. And every time I go back and ask them, is this something you've done? I don't get no response. And one guy hit back three times like, is this something you've done? 
or are you just talking at your butt? Because, you know, I, I ran into a real estate investor. She had $420,000 houses that she was able to get mortgages on. But the thing is, she had high income and she did not pass the bank's risk exposure yeah. limits. And she was doing these loans at Wells Fargo. So this is a big part of the situation. You know, the, the money thing, and also, if you want to even go further, you can have a money corner of your house. I don't have one, but Google your money corner. And in one corner of your house, you're going to have a little altar to attract money. And I hear it works very well. Because you got to have a money mindset. And the key to a money mindset is cash flow. And this is how I can tell that a lot of these uh, are rookie investors with these houses because, you know, you're trying to make 100K. If you made 80K after it all was said and done, you could move into another property so much quicker. But they're trying to make like 100, 105, 120K. And the savvy investors are going to remain on the sidelines. Because anyone that's been paying attention knows a recession is coming, knows that we're about to have some serious issues and consequences, know that we're about to run into a slowdown. So people with cash who are in the market are being judicious with their money because some of these houses I'm looking at, they're still going to be in the market next year because they're priced too high. And these people don't seem to understand the elasticity of pricing. They just don't get it. Like, one of the big things that I'm looking to do is expand out my other business and also get into real estate. So I'm looking, the prices are unreasonable with real estate. Because there was one prop that I looked at, it was like two fifteen. If I could have got it for got it for one eighty five, I could have cash flowed at ten percent, ten percent of my money, which it would go up every year. Lawrence, yeah, yes, it works. I had money in my house. Grant Donald says no less than two hundred units of apartment property is the way you go. Um, how many people in a position to buy a 200 unit apartment complex? I remember the last apartments I lived in. They had two sister properties. They sold them for $40 million. Uh, I will apply for an LLC today. Then what steps should I take? I'm new to the business credit journey. Thanks for your help. Just go ahead and get yourself an LLC and start applying with your business money, with your job money. Crazy thing is with Kramer on CNBC and other major news financing people, they keep saying no recession is coming, that the stock market will bounce back. One of the things is you got to look at who funds these organizations because we've had an inverted yield curve. The yield curve is inverted not once, not twice, but three times in less than eight months. That has been a reliable and predictable indicator of recession. And the more that it inverts, the greater chance that it happens, that we're going to have a recession. They keep saying this because they, they want you to keep participate in the stock market to keep you keep wanting you to buy chill will how do you build credit in your LLC should I bother once again the holding company is where the money goes you would build the, the business credit in the holding company that's where the income flows At what point were mortgage lenders loaned to an LLC? Three to five years. 
you have to have three, preferably five years of tax returns on record. Rod for real estate. People need to understand that Grant Cardone is talking on another level. You have to start off what you can in the real estate arena. Work your way up to a higher level as you can. Pretty much because 99% 99, 99 of the people in America cannot get out, go out and get a 200-unit apartment complex. Can't do it. And like all the people who've been on to me about you should get a duplex, you should get a multifamily, all the stuff that I've seen that I could pull off is stuff I don't want to own. I mean, I'm a little bit of an elitist. I'll admit that. But I want my properties to be nice. I want a certain standard. And I'm not going to be a hood slumlord. Like, hey, I own this building in the hood. It's making me a lot of money. I don't really care to go in that direction. I really don't because there is so much potential in doing it the right way. Because once again, understand my choices are predicated on the fact that I have one high performing business. And I've learned my lesson before about taking income out of one business and putting it into this new business. And the first time I did it, I didn't do as well as I should have. I, I really did. So this time I'm going, you know, because I've had this experience, take money out of one business and put it as efficiently as possible into another business. Cash flow is more powerful than credit, Mark Scott. Absolutely. Because this is what people care about. They don't care, they don't care about your credit score. They care about your ability to repay. And if you can show a lot of cash flow, that will open up many doors for you. And this is why I did the stream yesterday about what you need to do with your business. Because, like, you know, business credit is sexy. You know, you start an LLC, you put together something, three, four months, people throwing all this money at you. That's sexy. It raises your self-esteem that, hey, a Bank of America trusts me with a 100K credit card for my business. That's sexy. But that ain't making any money. You're appealing to your ego. You're appealing to your carnal needs. But you, you're not making any money. Bad Wolf MMA. There's a financial advisor on YouTube named Curtis May that discusses how the financial elite uses insurance powers, policies to power their own economies. Once again, uh, I'm not an insurance guy. I don't know anything about whole life or cash. I know nothing about that stuff. And typically the financial elite that I've been looking at have businesses. They have businesses. They have real estate. That's how they're doing it. Because, you know, I'm not going because of people talk about infinite banking. Whereas, I want you to think about this. You're already poor. You already make less money than the average American. How are you going to leverage this into bankable wealth when you've already started at the wrong level? Because this is one of the things that's going to hit millennials across the head. And a lot of people uh, don't want to hear this is millennials came out of college doing a crappy job market. So for every year that you come in at a, a, a salary less than what you should be at, the impact takes decades to heal if you can heal it. Many of these people are going to be behind. They're behind in purchasing the first house. They're behind getting married. They're behind in establishing certain benchmarks. This isn't going to rectify itself soon. And if you're a millennial, the only way that you're going to escape that is to start a business. Because a business, even, you know, even a crappy business is going to give you three to four times more income than the average person. 
even a crappy one. Let's say you got a business and you just, you know, barely making it. And you're, 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 you're doing three to four times more money than the average person with a job. So, you know, I don't go out into these esoteric theories and situations. I stay on a practical level of offering this advice. With the money, you got to have money on you. You need that money in the bank. You need that money in the credit system. And, you know, for some of people, you can have a money corner. You're going to have to Google this. Matter of fact, let's do this together. Money corner. All right. All right, here we go. Wealth corner in the bedroom, the southeast of any room, home, office, or garden is the universal wealth corner. And to find this feng shui wealth corner, you need to stand in the center of your home with a compass. Also, the north is regarded as the secondary feng shui wealth corner. This thing is serious. So Google money corner in your bedroom. So you're going to need a compass. So they're going deep in this. So look up money corner in your home or house. There's a lot. So there it is, man. So for those of you who want to, you know, because essentially this creates a money mindset. You're thinking about money in practical ways. You're learning to hold money. This creates a different level of cash flow. This creates a different level of money. Because one of the things I've learned, and this happened to me earlier with JDA. I had money on me and I had money in the bank because every time I would sell something for them, they would break me off a check right then and there. Or if the person was paying with cash, I'd take the cash. So my personal bank account got fat. Uh, I, wasn't, I didn't have to use my credit cards because I had all this cash. And this is when this set the stage for me to build my first company, you know, GC Solutions, the first company to make some money. Um, excellent suggestion about the money corner. Plus, the Jay's Emperor is very highly effective also to have and work with. I believe in the metaphysical because this comes from the power of your subconscious mind. Also, you need to straighten out how you think about money. Do you worry about money? Do you stress about money? Or do you see money as something that's always going to be in your life? Because that's a big, big part of getting money. Because, you know, you got these people out here. I'm going to be a millionaire, man. I'm going to be a billionaire. And you're like, how are you going to do it? And they're like, it's just going to happen, man. More likely it's not going to happen. But someone's like, well, I'm going to become a millionaire by serving 100,000 clients. You know, the more that you can 
articulate the details, the greater chance you have of getting to that end point. Because the money philosophy is very simple from a mental concept, but the practicality of the money philosophy is hard for a lot of people. It's very, very hard because they're a slave to their personal um, proclivities. You know, they, they, they're, there are certain things they got to do. But have some money, cash money on you, have money on credit cards, have cash money in the bank, and put together your money corner, you will see an improvement in your finances because you're thinking about it. You're looking at it at a, at a, from a very interesting way because people think money grows on trees. Money is a byproduct of service. So you have to increase your service. You have to uh, put together certain things for your business. Like today, you know, today is Consult Tuesday. I've talked, been on the phone with a lot of people, and I'm going to do it again next Tuesday. And this will be the day that if you want to get a consult, you want to talk to me, we can set it up. Because it makes more sense. The money philosophy, once you make this shift in your mindset, you'll always have cash. You'll always have money. Because the big thing is you don't let yourself go past certain parameters. Because, you know, I'm looking at, you know, I got a nice stack of cash and I'm probably not going to spend it all on a property because I don't want to go in and be house rich and cash poor. So I may actually save up enough to buy two houses, buy one and save up another. Because once again, this is an addition to what I'm already doing. Because the money philosophy is very important because once you understand that cash flow is more important than cash and cash flow is more important than credit, you'll be in the epicenter of the money philosophy because if you can get a hundred thousand, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a month of consistent cash flow, woo! That sets you up nice for so many things. It, that opens up the door to so many notes, but it's about that cash flow because this is why banks want to see the cash because they, you know, because banks have all these algorithms and they can, you know, they can look at your business and look at your cash flow and predict with a great deal of accuracy how you will do with certain loan products. That's why you want to have this high cash flow. You have the high cash flow, then that blows the doors off the bank's algorithms. It's all about the details. I'm going to make X amount of dollars that's too vague. That's why and how very important. Absolutely. You need to know this stuff. Because one of the big things about cash flow is once you establish healthy cash flow, that means you've done a lot of things right in your business. You've done a lot of things right in your business, which you should be proud of. Because when you get to consistently high cash flow, getting business credit on loans is so easy. It's so easy. They, they, they be throwing money at you. Because essentially, and this is one of the rules, you'll get money much easier from a lender when you don't need it. And this is why if you own a business, you need to go out and start establishing lines of credit. You need to get your business loans and stuff during the times you don't need it to establish a track record. Because once you do that, then it's like, oh, the bank's like, okay, well, we know Mr. Customer and Mr. Customer has excellent payment habits. Let's break off this loan. And this is one of the things that kills so many business owners. They cash and carry, and then when they need credit, they don't have a track record. So the best time to borrow money is when you don't need it, where you can pay them back with their own money. 
is something I've consistently done. You can make mistakes with cash flow coming in without missing a step. Absolutely. But remember that if you want to borrow money, you should practice borrowing money. Because when, you, when you're maxed out, your credit score is lower, and then you go out to borrow money, that's when it gets very hard. You want to borrow money and always have money on tap. You know, if you got a PayPal account, and uh, the money can be a little expensive, you know, depending upon how much you borrow. Like, you can get up to $30,000, and they only hit you over the head with $3,000 fee. Now, when you get up to uh, seventy-five, the fee increases to twenty thousand. So you gotta look at the, the cost of that money. And then um, when you get to one hundred and fifty thousand, they be asking for a lot of bread back. So you know you you have all of these issues and situations with regards to getting money, but. You know, these are just some money tips to practice because if you want to really ramp up your credit score, you want to spend as much as you can on a, on a card and pay it off really soon. So th this is some of the other stuff. And if you're an online entrepreneur, there are so many ways you can do this. Okay. So what I'm about to do. All righty, we're about to go into the ads. All right, so next Tuesday, if you want to talk to me, you can book a business consult.